What a truly glorious day. The sun is shining, the skies are blue. There's a cool breeze. It is truly a day where the hills are alive. But so is something else in the hills. And that could be rather murderous. A cinematic class is about to begin, and your professor is it. Another sundry effect. I am your cinematic professor and purveyor of truth in movies. And the truth is that this movie stands a chance. You know, one thing we as viewers probably don't need is yet another monstrous supernatural serial killer. I mean, there have been a few that have come along since Freddy and Jason that have, uh, Michael Myers, you know, those are probably the, the big three. And then there have been a few that have uh, come along since then. That little kid in the uh, a pumpkin head sack is one of them that's kind of, kind of bizarre. And uh, yeah, you know, Eventually, something runs out, and how, how many can there actually be before you start getting, eh, this guy has a little bit of potential, and he comes from the fine folks up in the Great White North. Yes, this uh, new monstrous serial killer comes from the hills of Ontario. In fact, I believe somewhere I wrote down exactly where they uh, filmed this. Sault Ste. Marie is where they uh, still, uh, filmed this, and in uh, something called Cooktown in Ontario. So uh, yeah, we're kind of up north there <laughs> for just a little bit. So I'd really like to tell you that uh, this movie offers something rather unique and different uh, as far as monstrous movie a serial killers go, but it doesn't. Uh, we have a situation with a tortured soul who is brought back to life through a necklace and the unrequited love. And, uh, you know, you mess with that love and that sets off the killer. OK, so it's, it's pretty much standard fare. I think the one thing that sets this apart is, uh, well, actually, there's two things. Uh, the manner of the killings, which is always what people go to see in these movies. and two the way they're presented. All right, let me explain those uh, just a bit here. And to do that, we need to go behind the cameras, and I need to read a name here for you. Our director of photography for this movie is Pierce Dirks. Now, Pierce does something rather neat. He, a lot of times on these killings, what they'll do is they'll they'll shoot close-ups. And this gives the special effects and the makeup people, the prosthetics people, an opportunity to really show their wares and you know make this thing look as grotesque and as realistic and gory as possible. In this movie, most of the killings are done with a long shot, or as they abbreviated LS on the script. That's a little bit different because in the long shot, while you can see what's happening, you're not right up in there and you don't, ah, but a bit of a caveat, my friends. There is a uh, an exception to this, and that is the a woman's death on the hill. Now, let me explain this. This when I saw this, and Lord knows I've seen my fair share of these hacker slasher movies. When I saw this one, even I went, okay, that was pretty cool. <laughs> they take the, you know, politically correct, it has to have a lesbian in the movie. So they take the death of the lesbian and our, our killer, Johnny. 
in a very unique manner, kills her. And it's pretty good. And on this one, they do use the close-up shots and the makeup people go bonkers and worthy. And it also serves as a commentary because literally Johnny is telling this lesbian that basically she's got her head up her ass. Don't get too hung up on reason. They just keep killing. Alrighty, since I mentioned uh, Pierce, I might as well go ahead and let you know who else is in this behind the camera for this movie. Our editor is Alex Jacobs and the writer and director of In a Violent Nature is Chris Nash. Uh, they've all done a pretty good job on this. Uh, it is kind of interesting, and I do think it's the approach to the killings. And, you know, I said this a little bit in the beginning, so I'll, I'll, I'll say it again now. Most people who like this type of movie do not go there to see some great story or have some great reveal or things of that nature. They're not even looking for a, an heroic arc in the story. They're looking for rather uh, unique and really gory ways to kill people. And uh, uh, certainly Johnny does not disappoint on this. Johnny is our supernatural, cannot be killed, uh, murderous hill dweller. And he is played by Ray, uh, Rye Barrett, uh, he does a pretty good job in this one. Uh, Chris is played by Andrea Pavlovic. The ranger uh, hunting everybody down is played by Reese Presley. And the woman is played by Lauren Taylor. So there is uh, Johnny and his major group of <laughs> victims uh, for this movie. As far as all that's concerned, you know... Uh, I talked about the the uh, girl on the hill, the lesbian on the hill in that death scene. I got to admit that was it's a pretty good scene. It's you know, back and go, ah, that's not bad. Um, what they've done with Johnny, because you know when these when these monstrous uh, uh, supernatural killers come, they they need to be masked in some way. I think the only person that really got away without wearing a mask was uh, was Freddy Krueger. Uh, but then he was all burnt and disfigured. And, uh, you know, when they started playing with Michael Myers and started having scenes where parts of his face would be seen or even, you know, Rob Zombie, I think, took the whole damn mask off. Now, that loses a lot of the, a lot of the punch. Same thing with Jason. Even though Kane Hodder did a really good job in playing Jason in, what, five or six of the movies, it, it, these characters are identified, you know, by by their outfit, and that the mask is the big part of the the outfit. The mask for Johnny in this is a forest firefighter mask, and uh, it serves well. As soon as you see it, you'll immediately think of. Uh, do you remember uh, Valentine's? I believe it was called Valentine's Day, where the uh, the killer. Uh, wore a miner's uh, mask, and he had a pickaxe, and he was kind of hanging out in a, in a mine shaft. 
Um, it'll, it'll put you in memory of that, although this firefighter's mask is a little more, uh, there's a whole lot more substance to it. It's a lot uh, bigger and thicker and covers the head a little bit more. So it, it gives it kind of a uh, fresher look, if you will. The one thing that may be a bit eh, somewhat annoying is uh, before the killings and after the killings, we have a POV shot. And it's a POV shot as if you were following Johnny, the killer. So what we actually see is Johnny walking either toward his victim or we see him walking away after the victim is dead. Those scenes are probably a little longer than they need to be. And sometimes you're sitting there going, okay, we get the idea. Get on with it. Speaking of getting on with things. I think perhaps now it may be time to go back to the early Cretaceous period. To the nation's first and only prehistoric film critic, Rex B. Johnny could very well be a new monstrous movie franchise serial killer. But a new gimmick Thank you, Rex. I think you're right on the button on this one. So all told, in a violent nature, which, by the way, is not only an IFC film, but it's IFC in conjunction with Shutter Original. So you have, those are two heavyweights when it comes to horror films, I think, and, and they've joined forces, and I think that's one of the reasons why this one is not just your run-of-the-mill chop em up, and it has a little something more uh, to offer, and it does offer you a brand new supernatural killer. They are calling it, in the uh, publicity for the movie, a golem-like creature. I don't know if I buy that, uh, and a lot of that might be, uh, you know, related to the current conflict in Israel and the fact that golems are associated with. I don't want to get into all that, but I think that's pretty much where this is coming from. There's some decent makeup and special effects in this uh, movie, and that makes the killings all worthwhile. It makes Johnny worthwhile too, and I think it's an interesting approach to the killings in that. There are uh, about two killings that are done in a traditional fashion with the very close-up, very gory, and the rest are done with that long shot pulled back, uh, and it's a nice way of seasoning the salad, if you will. Say, you know, Elon Musk has finally made the transition, and he has changed Twitter officially to X. So now, if you'd like to follow Rex and I on X, here's the new URL for you. X.com slash Rex Real. Some nice interactions going on there. Uh, I've got a lot of bots in the beginning, but, uh, you know, eventually people will start talking about movies and we can uh, get a dialogue going there. Some interesting things uh, going on. And I want to remind you that you know, Rex does have his very own store and this thing has turned out to be a pretty big hit so we are sticking with the apron the official outtakes with rex real apron for the sun now you know i've been showing you this thing in black but it also comes in white for this if i i can never see grilling in white I just, i'm lucky i get through a grilling session with a black one you know, white would be like you that marks everywhere uh and it comes in a variety of colors so if you are partial it may be green or blue or whatever. You can certainly order them that way. Here's a look at the black one, though. This is going to make you truly the envy of your neighborhood. Not necessarily when you go out and grill and people go, Oh, you know, he's grilling again. I wish he would invite me. Is that, wow, look at that attire. He has the official Rex Real grilling apron. That set you apart and make you the envy of your neighborhood. Fire up those charcoal. 
<laughs> Say, listen, the show is going to be available on BPTV's channel. It's also available on the social networks. Let me run those up for you. Here's the updated list. We've gained some. We've lost some. We have some more we're working on in the future. The name of the movie, once again, is In a Violent Nature, a combination uh, effort by IFC and Shudder Originals. Uh, if you like these kinds of movies uh, where you have these supernatural killers going around and just pumping people for uh, shits and giggles, then I think you're probably going to like this one, too. It has a few things different to offer in a violent nature and now that you have learned what you have learned here in the